Hey what is happening guys, welcome back to another video and today we'll be checking out GPD's new big thing and that is the GPD Pocket. So let's get right into it. So the first thing you're going to see is the Windows key right over there, I've covered it up and it's pretty much the same layout for the GPD Win which we'll be comparing it later on and uh, yeah let's just open it up. So the first thing you're going to get is a USB Type-C full fledged Type-C adapter and yes it does 5 volts, 9 volts and 12 volts which is pretty awesome. And to go along with that we actually have a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable to charge this thing and pretty much to sync it up or do whatever you want with it. So it's a pretty nice addition, future proofing us, very nice. Next up we have the manual as well as the pocket itself. And the manual here is pretty simple, big pictures, big letters and fairly simple and straightforward. And it comes in three languages, Chinese, English and Japanese. And if you guys don't know, the GPT-1 was actually pretty popular in Japan. But anyways, let's take a look at it. And here it is. So it feels pretty nice, it looks nice, it's a premium build quality, very minimalistic, very modern. But it is pretty expensive, but both of these guys target two different user bases. So Let's take a look at this thing. So again, anodized aluminum body, very nice. On the front you got nothing, on the left side you got nothing, on the back side you got nothing, and on the bottom we have a ventilation hole, that's where it sucks air, four rubber feet, and a very accessible back panel, so if you want to do mods or thermal mods or whatever, you can easily access this thing and modify it, and that's pretty cool. And on the right side we have a full-size USB 3.0 port, a headset jack, so microphone and audio, a mini HDMI port, as well as a fully-fledged USB Type-C port. That can also do DisplayPort out, but I think it maxes at DisplayPort 1.1. And over here we have the fan exhaust, because yes, this thing does have a built-in fan to cool this thing. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the outside. Let's quickly take a look at the inside over here. Alright, to take it apart, it's pretty straightforward. You got three screws on the top, three screws on the bottom, and the back panel just comes out like so. There's nothing on the inside, it's not making contact with anything on the inside, but here is what it looks like on the inside. Here we have the 7000 mAh battery, here we have the Z8750 processor, it's pretty much the highest end processor from the Cherry Trail generation, and uh, it's a pretty good processor, it does the job, especially for these kind of devices, it's pretty good. It's a 2 watt processor, so it's pretty lightweight. And yeah, so here we have the copper heatsink that goes all the way down here to this little fan right there. Here we have the Wi-Fi chip, as well as the 8 gigabytes of RAM. And over here we have something we haven't seen before on the prototype from the Kickstarter. And that is probably a Intel chipset. It says Intel on it, and probably heats up. That's why they put this uh, kind of a heatsink solution. So it's a thermal pad that goes onto this little piece that makes contact with uh, the chipset, as well as the heatsink right here. So who knows, it's still better than nothing. But yeah, that's actually pretty much it from the inside. We're not going to go too deep into it. Maybe I'll do a teardown video. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So expect most of the heat to come out on the right side. And that is that. Alright, so let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. And man oh man, does the hinge feel amazing. It is really, really good. It's very tight. It feels great. And here's what it sounds like when it's closed. It feels, it's just so satisfying. And yeah, it's a, it's a really good hinge. It's premium quality. And what we have here is a 7 inch Full HD IPS display. It's a pretty awesome display. And uh, we're going to be checking it out in just a bit here, but let's first take a look at the I.O. right there. And here's a keyboard that many people had mixed feelings about ever since it was shown on the Kickstarter. On the forums, people have suggested different layouts, better layouts, but not all of them were taken into consideration. And that's probably because they already started the manufacturing process, so it was kind of too late. But with that said, let's take a look and see what's going on here. On the top left corner we have the escape key, and on the top right corner we have the power button as well as two LED indicators. One of them is for power and the other one is for charging. On the top here we have some dedicated volume controls as well as the brightness controls that are controlled using the F and key down here. That also controls the F1 to 12, insert, page up, page down, home and end. So far so good, right? Except the FN key here is right before the control, and you know how frustrating that would be if you are a ThinkPad user, especially classic ThinkPads. I personally got used to them, but uh, some people still don't like them. But yeah, that is one of the things that is kind of weird. Why would you have an FN key all the way in the corner here? Now, maybe you'll get used to it. Who knows? Which brings us to the caps lock key that pushes this whole row of keys off to the right and off centers the WASD keys. Now, if we're gonna be playing games, it's gonna be really awkward trying to press these keys. And I really don't think we need a caps lock key, especially on this kind of keyboard form factor. It's kind of pointless and it's a wasted opportunity to improve the keyboard. And right down here, we have a weird layout of keys, but on the right side, at least the arrow keys are properly positioned. Which finally brings us to the touchpad and spacebar. These two keys are actually the spacebar. And yes, you can press either one of them while you're typing. Now you're probably asking, can you type like this? Uh, kind of. It's kind of weird, but we'll see. We'll have a comparison. So instead of a standard touchpad, thanks to the space limitations, the nibble makes its comeback. Basically, this is what you use for the mouse. Basically, you hover around like that and the mouse will move around the screen. And what this brings to the table is two dedicated mouse clicks. And you would definitely appreciate this if you can get efficient enough at this because you know what I'm talking about if you have been frustrated by horrible touchpads that try to copy Apple's design and they just fail completely. Modern laptops, they all have that issue, most of them. And having dedicated mouse buttons is a big deal for me because this is most of the time what makes or breaks a laptop for me. I don't have the responsiveness when I try to click the transition between clicking and tapping, 
it's a big mess with touchpad if it's not done right. But here we have that, so we'll see how this does. So once again, this is what the keyboard looks like, this is what the mouse looks like, and I'll be giving you guys my thoughts in just a bit, but I'll also have a dedicated video one week from now talking about it and how my experience went and if I got used to this keyboard layout, so stay tuned for that. All right, enough talk, let's go ahead and power this bad boy up. There we go, you can see the power LED on, and you can hear the fan spinning in the back. And here we have the GPD logo, and here's where it's sucking air and blowing air on the side here. And if you're wondering where the speakers are, they're actually right down here. I pointed out in the uh, teardown, and it's somewhere here, and the sound actually comes from within the keys themselves, which is pretty cool, but I'll show you guys what the audio quality sounds like. Now, I did go ahead and set it up, so I installed Chrome, installed Fraps, and we are going to be running some games off my Steam library from this 4TB hard drive. And if you're wondering, yes, this USB port does support an external hard drive. And this is not your standard hard drive, this is your double layered hard drive, it's 4 terabytes, and it does usually consume more power than a standard hard drive. Alright, so before we go ahead and check out the game performance, there's just something that's just not right. Just give me one sec here. Let's go to mouse settings. Alright, and changing to fast. There we go. But there's actually just one more thing that I just can't put my finger on it. Wait, hold on. What's this? Huh. There we go. Much, much better, just like home. Yep, if you're a ThinkPad fan, then you're gonna definitely love this modification. So, there you go, it's actually really responsive, really loving the mouse speed. It's really good, I mean, having a dedicated button and this nimble and at that speed, you can get some really precise, you're gonna have a fantastic experience with this kind of setup right here. But there are two things, there's no middle click, like ThinkPads, or a scroll button that you can just hold down and scroll through the pages which is fine, that's okay, we still have the arrow keys right down here. But anyways, let's go ahead and play some games and see what kind of performance we can get out of this guy. Let's go. Alright, so we have taken a look at the gaming performance, and obviously it's not the best, it's not a gaming machine, it was never meant to be. If you look at their example scenarios, which are pretty funny for businessman and woman, uh, fashionable and everything, obviously don't target it for gaming. But that said, if you're in a pinch and you really want a game, 
you can still do some lightweight gaming. You can obviously do emulators or lightweight games like Shellshock Live or one of those 8-bit modern games. You can play games like Counter-Strike Source or Half-Life or probably even Portal 1 um, on 720p low settings and still have a very enjoyable experience with some very good frame rates as you guys have saw. Using a mouse like this, which is uh, pretty simple, which I should totally recommend if you're going to be playing games on this thing. Or just grab an Xbox controller and play some fighting games like Blaze Blue or Super Street Fighter 4, which I have ran on the GPD Win and they ran pretty well, especially fighting games. It was actually pretty surprising. But if you want to see what kind of games the GPD Win can play, I have two videos actually uh, dedicated to that. Uh, and you can take a look at them. I'll put the links right over here and down in the description and yeah And this is what the EMMC storage speeds are. Uh, it's uh, pretty good. It's actually not too bad especially for EMMC so 87 write and 136 read speed not too bad it's still acceptable It's still a fairly fast machine for regular network use And if you're wondering how much free space you're gonna be getting right out of the box Well, you're gonna be getting 102 gigabytes I've checked it before I installed anything. But before we jump to the conclusion, let's quickly take a look at both of them side by side and see what they look like. Now keep in mind that the GPD Win, what's being sold right now, which is the only stock that's available right now, no longer has the plastic top shell. It actually has a very nice anodized aluminum top shell with the same color that you see here. And the Mac joysticks are no longer wiggly, they have fixed that with the current model. And the joysticks here have changed a bit, so pretty much they have improved this thing much better ever since it was released. So here's what they look like on the front, you got some indicators right here for charging, the microphone, the ventilation. On the side there's more ventilation, and if we take a look at the back, this is where the GPD Win has all its ports. Now if we compare it to the side, the GPD Win wins when it comes to ports, and that is pretty sad because this is supposed to be a laptop. Because if you think about it, the Pocket is supposed to be kind of a business laptop, it's supposed to have more ports, more accessibility, and better functions, except it's missing an SD card, and that's a big thing. It is missing an SD card reader, and you can't change the storage, you can't upgrade it. It's EMMC, it's soldered on, and really you just can't upgrade or add more storage if you want it. The only way you could add is get something like this, which will eliminate your USB port. This is a 128GB Lexar USB flash drive, it's pretty small, and has a really bright LED when it's turned on, like that. But, I mean... If you're in a pinch, you can still get it like that, but still, an SD card is a big missing feature from the pocket, in my opinion. In the GPD Win, if you take a look at my video, I was able to install 128GB on the flash drive here, and then it's really nicely tucked in here. And then I could add another 256GB SD card, and just pretty much load this thing with content to enjoy whenever I want. But yeah, this is what they look like side by side, especially when they're opened up. And this is how far the pocket opens up, that's about it. And this is how much the GPD Win opens up pretty much all the way and extends even more. Let's train on your neck and it's much better to look at and you have all those angles to play with, which is pretty awesome. And with this one, it's supposed to be a laptop. You're supposed to be working on it. Yeah, that's actually pretty much it for the comparison. I'll have a dedicated video comparing these guys, but this video is getting long, so let's jump to the conclusion and see what I think about this thing. So, obviously, as you have read and probably seen videos and people talking about it, why does this thing exist? Well, apparently there's a huge demand for it. If you take a look at the Kickstarter, they raised $3.4 million. And if you compare this to previous devices that kind of have the similar design, such as the Pandora device that opens up and runs Linux, I believe. Most people have used it for emulators and stuff, but I mean, we have the GPD win, but let's just go ahead and think of scenarios where people might use this thing. Maybe you're on a plane, you wanna watch a movie, and you don't wanna bring a tablet and a stand, then this thing is perfect. It's got a seven inch display, it can stand on its own, and it has a pretty good battery life, which I'll be testing out in the final review. Maybe you wanna play some retro games on the plane and still have something to stand on like that, but again, you can play with the GPD win, maybe not. Maybe you're in a pinch, and really this is the only thing that you can carry, and you wanna type something, then you can type something. Maybe you're someone who works in robotics and want a mini computer that can run scripts or manage your robot, then there you go. Maybe you're a photographer and you want a mini editing machine or running Ubuntu like they advertise, but really, Ubuntu, you're going to be scripting a lot, you're going to be typing a lot, the keyboard is not the best. Again, the caps lock here, it just ruins the keyboard. But really, for the price point, it's really high for what you're getting, honestly. The missing SD card, the caps lock that off-centers the whole keyboard, BIOS is not unlocked. The only thing in the BIOS I can really control is the boot menu and the secure boot and whatnot. That's about it, you can't control overclocks and whatnot like that. You can't really do any overclocking. Hopefully there will be a BIOS update that we can do and unlock all those features. The fan always spins most of the time. It's really loud, it's pretty annoying. It, sometimes it sounds like TV static, sometimes it sounds like a vacuum. It's really weird, it's really loud, I don't know why. But the max temperatures that I've got on the outside, or even on the surface here where the CPU is, are 40 degrees Celsius, and that's pretty good. The only Type-C adapter that I have did not work with this thing. It detects, but it doesn't read any of the stuff that's in here. 
it doesn't even charge it but this is the only one that i have and from what i've seen not all dongles work on all devices so maybe i should get another one and see if that one works on this thing and if you took a look at the indiegogo page the uh, nibble right here was actually red to begin with in the end they changed it to blue maybe to match the color scheme the buttons right here you can't just tap them you actually have to bottom out the key in order to register it so we'll see how i get used to that but yeah so we have kind of compared it to the gpd win just from looks and we have taken a look at some gaming performance. We have taken a look at the audio. The audio is okay. At max volume, you get a little bit of distortion. There is minimal bass. It's not too bad compared to what I've seen before. Once again, the gaming performance is as expected. It's not the best. And we're missing an SD card slot. And so far, the battery has actually done pretty good. But this is my experience so far and how my experience went with it for the past 24 hours. So there you go, guys. So hopefully this video will inform you and help you decide and find out more about this thing. But yeah, guys, that's actually pretty much it for this video. So stay tuned for my final review. Stay tuned for my performance video. And if you guys want me to test out anything, let me know in the comment section below. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe if you want like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.